Before we hop into today's episode of CSGO News, I do want to thank my new and upcoming sponsor. Ironically enough, their name is actually Upcomer, the new esports app out there for checking match schedules, match notifications, VODs and highlights, and so much more. If you guys want to download that, I would much appreciate it. All those links are down in the description. I hope you guys all enjoy, but more importantly, let's get into the news. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSGO News. Hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, and that's in big controversy as ESL has sold out once again. If you guys have not heard about this story, we have the next season of ESL Pro League starting very shortly here. That will be season seven. Alongside that, ESL 1 of course throughout the year of 2018 one of the larger events throughout the year is always going to be an ESL 1 event usually in Cologne for the past two years or so and they have both been sold out to apparently exclusive rights to Facebook now first off I want to know what do you, what do you guys think about this I know a lot of the different reactions throughout the community so far some people supporting it a vast majority of people calling it a sellout though and are worried about the viewership I myself included about this now of course the past two years and the past two seasons of ESL Pro League were exclusively on YouTube before that it was Twitch and this is 100 percent a sellout move a move for money and of course Facebook is the one platform out there who can probably offer more than YouTube and Twitch is apparently still not in the battle and still not willing to offer that right amount of money to actually get ESL to stream on their platform so I think a very smart move by Twitch and hopefully they're gonna uh, I think they're probably depending on ESL to have bad viewership with all these other platforms and maybe one day they will go back I think we can all agree we all enjoyed Twitch or at least a majority of us probably enjoyed Twitch the most YouTube second and people a bit kind of you know dramatized this as well this move to Facebook as being a pretty poor decision so please leave a comment down below what do you guys think I could be completely wrong I have been wrong many times in the past I could be very wrong here with the Facebook platform my own personal opinion though when I go to Facebook I have never never once besides actually testing out a live stream on Facebook before I've never actually watched a Facebook live stream when I did try that one time though the chatting function the chatting area the interaction of viewers was probably the poorest of any platform I've ever seen out there and that's the one thing I worry about now I know with twitch chat YouTube chat chat a lot of the chats just spam it can be considered very cancerous people are saying a bunch of death threats a bunch of lame things again and again and again but that's one of the main reasons why people do actually watch is for the chat itself a lot of a demographic out there is anywhere from you know 10 to 16 year olds they're gonna watch a match where they can actually be seen typing something it's a big draw for younger kids out there as well as people who want to voice their opinions and so when, when you go to Facebook not only is the quality we've had many people out there say the quality of those live streams is nowhere near the quality of YouTube or Twitch when it comes to 1080p. Facebook does not just does not look the same resolution as other sources out there, but as well as that, their chatting function is certainly by far uh, behind those platforms. So I could be wrong. Uh, what do you guys think about this? I do not think the viewership's going to help at all. And again, the main overall reason for this is the fact they've gone from Twitch three years ago, the last two years on YouTube, and again, changing platforms so frequently, no one really knows where to, I mean, you do know where to go. And again, everyone's always questioning the problem of why can't you just go from Twitch to YouTube to watch these events? If you really want to watch them, you're going to do that. But the thing is convenience. People don't want to go to Facebook to have to watch a CSGO live stream. They wanted to go to YouTube. Before that, they wanted to go to Twitch. And now we have ESL just selling out to every single platform who wants to pay the most money. What do you guys think is going to happen? I myself think viewership is going to drop. That's my opinion, though. We could have been wrong with YouTube. Apparently, YouTube last season of ESL Pro League was the highest viewer counts ever, even though it didn't seem like it didn't feel like that. So that's some big changes for ESL. They have sold out. Will it work out? for them I really do hope so or this could be the, the tiny slow death of ESL Pro League and it's you know it's viewership but also in really cool news we finalized our HLTV top 20 player list now please leave a comment down below what players you guys were found in the top 20 that shouldn't be there players who weren't in the top 20 that you thought would be there I'm gonna leave some comments for you guys on who I think was it may be like a little bit of a surprise maybe a bit of a, a downgrade and upgrade on this list it was kind of cool to see what HLTV standards were for the top players of 2017 I really couldn't think of a criteria though because there were several players who played for teams who didn't really win events there were other players out there who played for teams that won a lot of events there was really no significant pattern besides the lack of North American players so let's hop into our top 20 for the year of 2017 first stop coming on snacks then Olaf Meister bolts great to see him on there Adren followed by Oscar probably my biggest surprise of the list was Oscar he came out of nowhere obviously going back from Hellraisers back to Mouse Sports and uh, you know kind of, kind of I think he's a really underrated player out there and it goes to show you kind of a, a player who kind of snuck under the radar but not by HLTV standards then followed by Kirby we also have of Convig, Zipex, Elige being the one North American player of all the entire list besides the SK Gaming squad who actually had four of their five players make it. Elige representing NA very proudly there. Followed by Hobbit, Dupree, Guardian have a great comeback year joining Navib and then of course back to FaZe. Then we had Simple. I think Simple was a bit probably underrated here. I thought he was a much better player and this is where I thought the criteria for HLTV maybe they were going off wins for your, for your team. I really would have thought Simple would have been a top five player based off you know personal player ratings but apparently not by HLTV 
standards. He was followed by Kenny S, then of course Fallen on there, you know, uh, pretty solid every single year. And then we have Device, of course, being the best all-around player that many people talk about. Rain being very underrated, not by HLTV rankings, but I think he kind of slipped under the radar and people always forget he is that main phase player, the, the kind of the solid player that will always be there. So I thought it was a great placement for Rain. It was great to see him as well. They were followed by Fur, another kind of a sleeper there. Also, Nico. I was confused myself personally. I thought Nico had, you know, I, I thought this before even looking into the stats itself. I didn't think Nico was a very showcased, a very, you know, show off kind of player this year. Apparently, I was wrong. Uh, and apparently, he's really stood out in that phase roster. I think a lot of their wins were really what stood him out on, on, on this list. I think if they had a few less wins, they didn't have four wins in 2017, I think he would have fallen quite dramatically, which of course does make sense. But I think he might have been a bit overrated. But it was great seeing Rain there as well, a little bit behind him. And of course, we have now for the back to back years, guys, back to back years, two years in a row. That is, of course, Cold Zera from SK Gaming. Also, kind of congrats to SK Gaming in general as four of their five members, everyone besides Taco, made the list. So that was pretty crazy to see. And yes, I'm including Bolts on that roster. So everyone besides Taco made it. And uh, yeah, that was pretty crazy to see SK Gaming taking by far and away. Of course, the majority of Astralis players also made it, as well as FaZe Clan. So that was really cool to see. Those are your top 20 players for 2017. Leave a comment down below who surprised you, who didn't, who should have been on the list, and who shouldn't have been on the list. And also an update from the Chinese scene for all you Tai Lu fans out there. They now finalized their roster heading to 2018. So congrats to them as they have added Accurate to that lineup on screen for all of you. And Accurate's actually from Racket Esports. He's been a sub for the team in the past. So that was some good news for Tai Lu. Uh, some, finally some good news over the past few weeks where it's all been just bad news for them. So looking forward to a great 2018. Also in female CSGO news, it was, you know, kind of hinted towards us from Juliano, a personal inside source. She messaged me. She did not deny the rumors and it's been confirmed. CLG Red's former Potter has joined Team Dynasty Female. Team Dynasty now is a full roster on screen for all of you and they will be by probably by far and away the number one female CSGO team for the majority of 2018 with Potter joining that lineup in place of Mimi and Michaela Lintrup who left several months ago after the drama between her and Juliano and the rest of the team. So Team Dynasty has now confirmed their roster with CLG Reds Potter to finalize that. So that was an also in big news and also for all you Bondic fans out there, Bondic has now returned back to HR after his loan to Ty Lu. So kind of a, a weird string of months for, for Bondic. Of course he had that chance to go to the major and then that kind of fell through. So I feel bad for the guy. I'm still really overall confused. Someone leave a comment down below why he actually did this in the first place, why he decided to go on loan to Ty Lu. Of all teams out there, it was kind of weird to see him there, but Bondic's now back in the HR lineup. That HR lineup is one I'm looking forward to in 2018, which I don't think has much of a future as of right now, but I'm interested to see how they build that lineup progressively uh, throughout the year. And very lastly, today's episode of CSG News, kind of a cool movement right now. It's called Product Destiny. It's actually put on by the team known as Bravado Gaming. If you guys remember that name, they're actually a South African team, one of the first South African teams to ever make it to a WESG, I think it was 2017 event. As well as that, they're currently in ESCA Maine for the North American scene, and they will be officially moving to North America for the next six months to push this project known as Project Destiny. Now, what this is for is to kind of get representation for other countries out there that are not well represented, such as South Africa in the CSGO scene. So, really cool project. I'll try and leave a link down below if you guys want to check that out, if I can actually find one for them. So, Bravado is now coming to North America, and I wish them the best of luck in ESCA Maine. Now, moving off that, though, for our last story for today's episode of CSGO News, we do want to talk about Team Rogue. I actually missed this story a couple days ago by Dust to US. If you guys want to check that out, I'll link that article down below. Rogue Gaming, okay, Rogue has now been officially bought out. That is Hiko's team by a, a company known as Rekt Global. Rekt Global has now bought that majority ownership share from Steve Aoki. If you guys don't know, Steve Aoki is actually a pretty well-known musician out there. Uh, you know, a very, very wealthy musician who actually got into the esports scene by buying out Team Rogue. He has now sold that position to Rekt Global. And yes, currently they now own Team Rogue. Who knows if their, if their team name will change. And yes, ESO Pro League does start sometime soon. And they currently only have a three-man roster. They lost Shinobi last week. So it's Hiko and a couple other players on that team who are now a three-man roster who were just bought out. Who knows who's going to be joining that roster sometime soon. But Hiko's team is looking kind of broken going into the ESL Pro League. And hopefully they can finish better this season. I really hope the best for them. And uh, hopefully finish top half, which would be a far stretch, but a great achievement for that roster. So hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. If you guys did, leave a comment or a like down below. As always, my name is Jake. I'll see you guys in a couple days with some more CSK News. And uh, remember, I, I like you. Thank you.